Fight on, USC fans. Still soaking in this 2020 schedule, which was released early Saturday morning. We heard Merton Hanks, of course, commending USC and ASU for stepping up to the plate and agreeing to play in that early 9 a.m. window on Fox. Cannot wait for that game. USC's three road games, by the way, at Arizona, at Utah, and at UCLA. And their North Division crossover matchup is a Friday night showdown with Washington State in week five. And how about it, the head coach of the Trojans, Clay Helton, here to join us and break down the schedule. Clay, it's great to see you. And I just want to start by asking about that week one showdown with ASU. I know you and Herm Edwards had to agree to that 9 a.m. start time. Mm -hmm. Why did you feel like that was the right move for your program? Well, you, you always want to be able to play on the biggest stage and the brightest lights and a noon kickoff uh, Eastern where the entire country uh, can watch two great quarterbacks, in my opinion, two of the best quarterbacks in the country, uh, in Jaden and Keaton, go at it in the opening ball game of, of this Pac-12 schedule. How exciting is that? Uh, and I think we're just all so grateful as coaches, as players, to be able to play the game we love. I think our attitude is uh, just put the ball down. It doesn't matter where it's at, who we're playing, what time it's at. We're just so appreciative to have the opportunity to play and to play in that big a game uh, versus a uh, an immense uh, Pac-12 South uh, team that's got its own aspirations, a great quarterback on a national stage. What, what could you ask for? That's, that's why you come to USC. Yeah, the only thing we could ask for is that we want to be there, Coach. So th that's the only other thing that we want on top of that. But in addition, you know, what are the players like right now? You reference like they just want to mm -hmm. play. Like, have you seen a change with that to say, yeah, let's throw it out at 9 a.m. Pacific at home mm -hmm. at the Coliseum? Yeah, you know, you probably got a sense of where our team was at by the letter that they wrote to our governor. Uh, I thought it was a, a very educated letter, um, a very respectful uh, and thoughtful letter. Uh, and they did it as a team. They did it as a collective unit, expressing their voice and expressing their want uh, to play. And and uh, being able to see the change that's happened in our environments and in our communities in the Pac-12 geographics with infection rates coming down, are us getting it the opportunity to have everyday testing through Quidel and, and the study of the heart and the protocols that, that go along with it now, um, if you have the virus, uh, the environment for us has changed and it's raised hope uh, for our players, our team. And now you give us the opportunity to go have a chance to win a Pac-12 championship and present a national resume to a, a, a playoff committee. Um, that's exciting. And so uh, we've got five weeks, uh, five weeks right now to be able to implement systems and, and prepare for a good Arizona State team. I want to ask you about that letter, Clay, that, that you know, Amon Ross St. Brown, Keaton Slovis, I know mm -hmm. several of your guys had a hand mm -hmm. in, in formulating that. Can you just give us some context into how you found out that they were doing that? Did they come mm -hmm. to you and tell you, we've got this mm -hmm. idea? Did they give you the letter and say, are you okay? We sent it. Like, what was the mm -hmm. kind of behind the scenes of how that all came together? Yeah, I, I had a couple calls on a Sunday, uh, you know, after uh, a college and NFL slate from some of our leaders and saying, coach, you know, we want to have the chance to play. Um, uh, how do how do we get our voice out? And I said, is this is this the feeling of the team? And they and they said, yes, coach. So I came into work on Monday, had a chance to look our players in the eye as they were working out, get their feeling. And it was I mean, it was evident uh, that it was across our team. Uh, so visited with our leaders and said, guys, if you want to do this, I'm, uh, our administration, our coaching staff are going to support you. Um, the one thing that I do want you to do is one, educate yourself. Uh, educate who the letter needs to go to, what it needs to be about, make sure it's professional, make sure it's respectful. Uh, and then it's not an individual. This is a team decision. And so they put the context together uh, as our leaders. They presented it to our team. We voted on it uh, as a team. And it was evident that uh, our team wanted this. And I was extremely proud. I've always said I got three children by birth 110 I get the honor to adopt and as an adopted father when when you saw those young men put that out there in the way they did uh, it still gives me goosebumps today because that's that's what you want for your children the, the opportunity for them to to have a voice and to celebrate their voice and I thought they did it in a first class extremely respectful and educational way Speaking of your players, you've been able to probably hear them on the practice field as well. You've had a version of OTAs, organized team activities. Uh, LA is different than other places in the Pac-12, let alone the entire country. How have you been able to keep this team, who clearly has a hunger to play, 
focused, even if it's in small groups, if you guys have inched your way closer to a training camp on the night? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, one was the messaging and then two was the plan. And the messaging right when the season was postponed was very important uh, to our football team. And it was this, that guys, you know, the mission is still out there. OK, understand that. And uh, when you're in the military and you're you're given a mission, sometimes the conditions aren't right to go perform the mission. Uh, it, it, it's postponed. It's set back. But you continue to train. You continue to prepare because, you know, the mission is coming. Uh, we just didn't know if it was going to be in fall, winter, spring, fall 21. But we have to have the toughness and the discipline and being united as a team to make sure that we continue to prepare. So we came back on July 6th and our focus was the plan of preparing our kids physically to be able to play, not schematically, but being able to concentrate ourselves on soft tissue and joints, making sure that they were football ready uh, with functional football movements and preparing the body. So that's what we did in July, uh, August and September. Now we're sitting here in the OTA period two weeks of OTAs, four weeks of training camp, and now we're implementing schematics uh, and schemes. So you got a new defensive coordinator, a new special teams coordinator, and we're in the second year of, of Coach Harrell's uh, system offensively. So there's a lot to be done, uh, and we started this week uh, implementing those systems. we got another week next week of OTAs, and then we get into that training camp, and, and that's going to be big for us. Kids are in shape. Uh, they're ready for camp, uh, and now it's about implementing our systems. You know, I think one guy that a lot of people are excited to watch in year two of his young college career is Keaton Slovis, your quarterback. It's easy to forget that he was a true freshman last year and with everything that he was able to do in Graham Harrell's offense. What have you seen from him from a a leadership standpoint and and even just a physicality standpoint from Mm -hmm. where he was at the end of last season to, to where he is right now? Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. As he has grown, our team has grown. Uh, and, and you saw it last season. I, I thought he played his best football in the second half of the season. And we grew as a team and we played our better uh, better football in the second half of the season as he grew. He is so coachable. Uh, he takes everything in, absorbs it, and, and truly perfects his craft. And what I have seen uh, from him, you know, last year was just – okay, I'm a true freshman thrown into the second game of the year. And it was really focusing on him uh, and and his improvement. Now he's in year two and you can see his leadership qualities coming about, you know, one with his actions of how he works. I mean, mean, he's daylight till dark. Uh, He's a gym rat uh, and really has become a stronger player. I mean, uh, he walked in here 200 pounds and now he's 215, his core, his strength. You can see the chemistry that's coming about in, in year two. You can just see it with these receivers that now he's been with you for a year. The ball's coming out uh, so much quicker uh, as far as timing, the accuracy, because he's on the same page with the kids chemistry wise. So, um, you know, there's been tremendous progress. I can't wait personally being a quarterback coach by trade and, and a football fan. I can't wait to see the kid play, uh, especially with the receivers receiving group that he has around him. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And, and, you know, he has done a tremendous job of being the example of what we want as a Trojan uh, and what we want as a, as a quarterback uh, on our team. You reference a Trojan quarterback. You've been around there for a long time and it is a who's who, right? When you start, you're a Heisman candidate, just how it is. Mm -hmm. This season is relatively single elimination tournament. How are you talking to him about dealing with the expectations that come with just playing quarterback at USC. Yeah, you know, he's done such a great job, as you saw from day one. Uh, I mean, one, he he plays in a Fresno State ball game and, and really leads us to a win in a tough situation and then has to go against Stanford the next week in, the, in his first start. And, you know, we saw something in recruiting uh, with his intangibles that, uh, you know, bright lights didn't affect him, situations didn't affect him, adversity didn't affect them. Uh, That was evident as we went through the season uh, last year. Uh, And now we enter year two uh, and to be able to see him have those qualities uh, that have been Sam Darnold and Cody Kessler and Matt Barkley and the likes of the Sanchez's and the Leonard's and and the Carson Palmer's. I mean, he just, 
he's continuing a tradition of excellence at the position uh, that I think is second to none uh, in, in college football uh, since the year 2000 on. Um, he, he knows uh, what is expected at the position. He welcomes the expectations, as we all do, as players and coaches here. When you put on that jersey behind me, that USC jersey, uh, you, you know what comes with it. And, and he loves those expectations and loves the opportunity to wear that uniform and go out and represent it. Clay, I know that it feels like November 7th can't get here fast enough, but I'm mm -hmm. curious for you, what is it like to be able to actually watch college football Saturday games, you know, almost like as a fan, mm -hmm. what are your Saturdays mm -hmm. look like right now? Well, you know, when it first started off, your, my soul hurt because I didn't know exactly if we were going to get to play or not. But now, there, you know, hope uh, hope makes everything better. And, and when you have a light at the end of the tunnel and you know your time is getting ready to come, um, it, it makes you happy. And I've, I've always said you're only as happy as your un, unhappiest child. And to be able to see the 110 kids I get the honor to coach and see their happiness right now, when I step on the grass, you know, that time with them and engaged with them, um, I'm a lot more pleasant person, but uh, I'll say this, my wife is happier too. She, she's, she's had to put up with me for a while and now I get to be back on that field and, and uh, my soul is alive again. So uh, I, I'm looking forward. I, I had the most fun last week being with the guys and I can't wait for the next 12 weeks to be honest with you. So good. Coach, if I know you, you've got your pen out. You're one of the best mm -hmm. in the country at teaching situational football. And you're saying, all right, mm -hmm. special teams that happen. Mm -hmm. I got to teach that. Mm -hmm. I got to teach that. Mm -hmm. So yes. um, I, I'm sure you're dialed in in how mm -hmm. to use these weekends to teach your players. man. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it, it's a lot of coaching is going on right now in a short period of time. And it's really fun. It, it's a challenge. It's adverse. Uh, but that's why they put coach in front of your name. It, you know, you love these situations to be able to teach and educate kids and, and then go watch and play the game they love. So this is a fun time. It really is. Yogi. We are excited to see that big smiling face and glad to know how happy all of your student athletes are. We feel the same way at Pac-12 and, and can't wait to, to see you guys get out there 9 a.m. on November 7th. Cannot wait, Coach. Thanks for the time today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Yogi. Take care.